After England defeated the French at the Battle of Brimule, Normandy was back in King Henry's hands. But one year later, his good fortune turned to tragedy. In 1120, his son and heir, William Adeline, died in a shipwreck. The future of Henry I's kingdom was in jeopardy. Henry desperately needed a new heir. With no legitimate sons left alive, he broke with tradition and chose his daughter, Matilda. Henry forced his barons to swear an oath to accept Matilda as queen. But when the king died, they broke their promise. England would not be ruled by a woman. Matilda's cousin Stephen saw his chance and claimed the throne. The crisis moved to the capital. At Westminster Abbey, Stephen was crowned king, but Matilda wanted what was hers. She was also lining up powerful supporters who would fight Stephen for her right to rule. Their conflict engulfed England in civil war. Fighting raged throughout the land. In 1141, everything focused on one of the kingdom's most strategic cities, Lincoln. Matilda's allies had commandeered the castle. But King Stephen was determined to take it back. He besieged the castle. Stalemate. As dawn broke on February the 2nd, everything was about to change. Matilda's half-brother, Robert of Gloucester, raced to break the siege. As Robert's forces approached Lincoln, Stephen's army turned away from the castle to face them. Robert could win Matilda the crown, but only if his army could win the day. Robert of Gloucester's forces approached Lincoln. Their task, to liberate the castle from King Stephen's siege. While behind Lincoln's walls, troops loyal to Matilda held the castle for the Empress. First, Robert's forces would stage an ambush to prevent enemy reinforcements from joining with King Stephen's army. Robert's men concealed themselves in a sheltered grove and lay in wait for the enemy. Be 
Robert defeated the first column of Stephen's reinforcements, but he knew more were on the way. Beth Natslu, Gath Jagath Obadvin Armas. Derma away to Faren. Beth Natslu, Gath and Shanka Forthover. It obey thine hess. It for the thin hess. It sua hess aliata. It do a sua to hess. With more of Stephen's reinforcements eliminated, Robert was steadily undermining the siege. It obey thine hess. Takath oppa thin armas. It so a hessa aliata. It so a hessa aliata. It do a so a thuetest. It so a hessa aliata. It obey thine hess. It do a so a thuetest. Vendus is an a near me. Robert's men decimated King Stephen's reinforcements and were poised to break the siege. Continuing the push towards Lincoln, Robert sent in a large company of reinforcements to aid his vanguard. To further weaken the siege, Robert would need to cut off Stephen's supplies. He targeted the nearby market town. Yes. It can they do. Foliende Hestus. Periende Hestus do. Rallying to Matilda's cause, a large group of knights arrived at Lincoln to bolster Robert's army. With the market town in ruins, King Stephen's supplies began to dwindle.
Robert received word that Welsh troops under Matilda's banner were en route to join forces with him. But King Stephen had the roads to Lincoln heavily guarded. And the route was not without risk, even for the hardy Welshmen. Yet to the but mean a word. Yeah. Yet to the honest with <laughs> Making their way to Lincoln, Matilda's Welsh allies were ambushed by the king's soldiers. Robert's men would need to aid the Welsh if they wanted their help in breaking the siege. Joining forces on the road to Lincoln, Matilda's allied troops made for the castle to lift the siege. Robert's forces spotted a large detachment of Stephen's soldiers guarding the castle gates. If they hoped to liberate Lincoln, they would need to break the blockade and rout the army. Robert's forces scattered the king's army, leaving the gates to the castle unguarded. He shall lay the yard. But mean a word, Ferris. He shall lay the yard. 
Robert's men finally united with Lincoln's garrison. They could now use the castle to strengthen their army. To lift the siege, they needed to destroy the enemy camps surrounding the castle. Barita, what name is Beothyardohestesthutfo? What name is Beothyard? Yes, that's an odd boy, man. New Tulkes, set it down. Look at your BSE ready, Frankish. On the switch. Hey, all right, what is that? Mit Bordenes! 
Matilda's forces struck hard, destroying one of King Stephen's siege camps. King Stephen's army dwindled as Matilda's forces struck down another siege camp. Matera. 
Min spärre är jag. Jag är chefen. Frekes haken. Nu hästes. Till dvindle. Spärre. Spärre men jag. Vi är gen du sa. Kom och ta. Glidande när hörtes no one nära där. Följande hästes. Hästes kommer. Hold the hand with us! Hold! The king's army was scattered, and those who didn't fall fled. King Stephen was spotted, shielded by his men. To end the siege, Matilda's forces needed to capture Stephen and rout his army. Al Suiza, yes. Fuste tul nuta. Come a Matilda's men closed in and finally captured King Stephen. Matilda's forces had won the battle at Lincoln. But the fight for the crown was not over yet. A counterweight trebuchet 
was the king of all siege engines. A catapult capable of smashing down castle walls from great distances. At Warwick Castle in England, they've built a replica, one of the largest in the world. Originating in 7th century China, by the 13th century, trebuchets had evolved into devastatingly powerful weapons. Such a simple design, but so effective. It has several key features. A pivoted arm with a weight at one end and a sling to hold the projectile at the other. To prime, the six-ton weight is raised using tread wheels. So this is one of the wheels, one of two that's attached to an axle, which would lift the counterweight, weighing six tons. It's based on muscle power alone. What's essential about launching a projectile as far as possible is making sure that this end of the arm is moving as fast as possible. So once that weight drops, it really sends this point of the arm moving at its highest velocity. This was done by positioning the pivot close to the counterweight and by launching the projectile from a sling. When released, the sling whips round, vastly increasing the launch speed. Trebuchets were carefully aimed, like modern guns. In order to weaken the castle walls or even breach them, you had to make sure that the projectiles hit the same spot every single time. For each projectile to follow the same trajectory, they all had to be the same weight and shape. To achieve this, masons used a gauge. Now, I'm going to load this projectile into the sling. Oh, this one must weigh about 25 kilograms, but some projectiles can get up to 150 kilograms. That's the weight of two men. Trebuchets were also used to throw burning tar, beehives, even dead bodies. Anything to cause maximum distress to the enemy. Did you hear that whoosh? It was the counterweight trebuchet's lethal combination of power and accuracy that made it the ultimate medieval siege weapon.